Vic Moist because Gary Baker was sixth in the A final. That means that Michael Shield, who finished in front of him, and Vic Moist, were quick enough to get into the super final. But we've only got four cars. So Steve Palmer, 466, leads the way from Trevor Hopkins. And Trevor Hopkins, very, very quick. That was a terrific start. Well, I can safely say we've got two races in this particular final. It is the last final of the day. The first one is between the Metro of Steve Palmer and the Ford RS200 of Trevor Hopkins. And some way back in the dust, it's going to be between Gary Baker, number 100, and number 50, John Milner. That certainly makes the time keeping and the scoring easy for us. Trevor Hopkins, you can hear the fluttering of the wastegate on the turbocharged RS200 engine as he changes down through the gears. Steve Palmer, a driver who has come through very, very well from two wheels to four wheels, going better and better with that metro. He didn't have a good start in the season, he ended up off the circuit a few times in the early meetings usually with the help of somebody else. Now he's out there doing very, very well in the super final. And being pressed extremely hard by Trevor Hopkins now. Being pressed extremely hard. Where are the third and fourth place men? There they are, Gary Baker. Seemingly now has pulled away from number 50, John Milner. And John Milner, no matter where he is on the circuit, the minute he sees the corner, his hand seems to go down onto that handbrake, yanks it on, slides the back end of the car out. He really is reveling in it. And as we watch the men at the back there, we notice that Steve Palmer appears to have extended his lead slightly over Trevor Hopkins. Can Hopkins close up on him as they go up into the gooseneck i doubt it because if you go too fast into there out of that say going too fast you slide too wide but one of the things that would have put trevor hopkins off there was driving blind into the dust that has gained a fair bit of advantage to palmer now it's interesting to note that uh, steve palmer appears to be able to gain ground simply by spinning the wheels off the loose throwing up a lot of dust and that slows the man behind down so that's an interesting technique. We'll have to wait and see if he does it again. Waiting for the others to come through there. There is number 100, Gary Baker. And where is John Milner? There is Milner once again. Tail out as he goes round the hairpin. Really is an interesting style to watch that one. Back with the leader, who is already at the opposite corner of the circuit. So, Steve Farmer has a full half a lap advantage over the man in fourth place at the back of the field. And once again, we see that he's managing to hold off Trevor Hopkins. Hopkins is not really closing. In fact, if anything, he's dropping down a little bit. We know that Hopkins is trying. You can see the flames there coming from the exhaust. Watch the man in third place going through. The track is clear, both sides of the hairpin there. The watch builder locks up. Why is the car not quite beneath that time? You can really see how hard John Milner is trying. However, I do suspect that uh, if he tries that a little bit too fierce with the tyre's grip, we could well see that first show going over into a roll. And that's one thing that I'm sure we wouldn't want to see, spectacular as it might be. So Steve Farmer, well on his winning way. He's full clear of Trevor Hopkins. Checkered flag out, two for final bits for Steve Farmer. Second place, Trevor Hopkins. There's the man, an awful long way back, who is going to finish third. The Ford RS200, number 100 of Gary Baker, and in fifth place it's going to be the little Peugeot of number 50, John Milner. So, victory in this uh, latest round of the British Rallycross Championship goes to number 466, Steve Palmer with the Metro. That will certainly boost his uh, chances of being right up there at the top of the points table, but it's still Michael Shield who leads, although Michael did not have too good a meeting here today. That's all from Cadwell Park. Join us again when we bring you some more Rallycross here on Screen Sport.
Marshall is standing at the front of the grid. That's where we should see number 100, Gary Baker, in the Ford RS200. Now, Gary was fairly confident when I spoke to him earlier in the paddock, but he did not appear for his first qualifying run. He did not appear for his second run. They've come under start orders. There's going to be a dash to the second flag between Will Gullock, number three, and 466, Steve Farmers. These are the two fastest drivers here at Midden Hill today. And they're very, very evenly matched at the moment. It's Will who goes to on the inside. Is he going to slide wide? Well, Palmer decides he's going to try and take him around the outside. Keeps the power down. The two cars have gone round Chesson, totally side by side. And they came off Chesson side by side. They were very lucky not to spin as they touch. Steve Palmer manages to hold on to it. Will go up. He's tucked in there right behind him where you can see how well Steve Palmer has taken to Rallycross in just a couple of seasons because Steve was a former two-wheel exponent he drove bikes for some time then he changed straight into rallycross and was an immediate sensation will gollop had slowed right down as he came out of the hairpin he now speeded up again and speaking of speeding up steve farmer i stopped there for a moment because steve went charging into paddock turn and i thought he wasn't going to get through so it didn't look as if he could manage to turn around paddock turn We've lost him in the dust. We're back with the man in second place, Will Gollop. I wondered what was wrong with Will's car. It certainly was slow coming out of uh, the hairpin. Now he's catching off. Steve Farmer holding on well there in the lead. Now Steve Farmer won his first qualifying run, and this man, Will Gollop, won his qualifying run. There is another competitor. Can't see a number on that one. It's gone off there somewhere. Obviously not in contention in this race, but these two drivers are now. Will Gollop is definitely closing on the leader. He's closing all the time. Let's just wait and see. There is Will Gollop. He's really flying. Then got the bit between his teeth. He's, Will Gollop is sliding the still green metro a lot more than Steve Farmer. They're into their final lap. Let's see how much he closes up as they come into Paddock Turn. Looking back down the order, I think most is in uh, third place, a long way back. Not to forget the other drivers, then number 13, Mike Wood and Paul Bullivan. Those are the other cars in effectively a second race, but this is where the battle is for the lead. Currently, it's Steve Farmer who has it. Then Will Gollop. Will is a lot closer than before, but he's only got literally this last corner in which to do anything about the leader. What can he do about him? They disappear into the dust. This is where they clashed earlier. I think it's going to be Steve Farmer this time. Will Gullock closing all the time, right on his tail. Almost neck and neck as they came across the finish line. But Steve Farmer is in, takes his second win of the day. And no doubt we'll see Steve on pole position for the grand final. The Metro 6R4 driver extremely quick. Second place, it's 119, Ivan Moak. Then it's going to be number 13, just going up to take the checkered flag as I speak, Mike Wood, and completing the order in this last race of Rallycross qualifying, Paul Bullivan in the BMW. But there is a man who won this particular race and has proved to be the fastest here at Lydon Hill. Steve Palmer, second fastest today, and your flamboyant driving style looks like it might put you in touch with Will Gollop. How do you feel about that? Yeah, well, I've, um, he was a bit quicker than me on the first run, but I've got him in the race for the second, second runs, and... Uh, it's all down to the start, really, um, but I'll give it a good go, and mainly I'm sort of interested in winning the final. Trevor Hopkins is out today, so it could be a head-to-head -head between the two of you. Yep, um, I think Trevor's had a few problems with the car, but if he gets it going well, he'll certainly be up in there. As they go down into Chestnut Drift, sliding wide, it's Will Gollock. He's got Big Boy right in there behind him. But that is the order as they go round the loop and regain the tarmac for the first time. And Will Gollop is really flying. He's trying to go up through on the inside. Is he going to try and outbreak Steve Farmer? Not this time. Steve Farmer has got the momentum to carry him through into the lead. So it's 4 6 six. Steve Farmer. Then number three, Will Gollop, followed by 3 six, six, Big Boy. That's the top three. Who is it next? It's it looks like Aidan Cregan, 173, Cregan in fourth place, and then Tom Bishop in fifth. So Metro are holding first, second, third, fourth, and fifth position. Then this man, 119, Ivan Moe. Ivan back place of the conventional card, and he's got behind him, 99, John Cross. And 
and it's wide at that rowing up front. Oh, all the cars, I think they're starting this final lap, still running. This time, Will Collins going to try and do a pick here from the crowd. He's got an awfully uh, good following here at Lynn Hill, and Will Collins gets through into the lead, but Steve Palmer fighting back now. Steve staying wide, hoping that Will will drift through. Palmer tucked in tight. Have you got the side on the hill? No, because Will Gollop seems to have the better line that time, so Will Gollop now holding the lead. Now, just watch the two styles of these drivers while they both put their metros through by the turn. You'll notice that Will Gollop's car seems to be sideways an awful lot more than Steve Farmer. So Gollop, of course, doing well in the European Championship. He's been contesting as many rounds as he can of the European Rallycross Championship mixing with the likes of Stefan, of uh, Matty Alamaki and Martin Schenker and of course John Welsh, the only British driver who is not competing here at Lyndon Hill today. The field now is getting very strung out and as we pick up the leaders we've still got Will Gallop in the lead, then C. Palmer in second place, then it's Mick Moyd, 366, followed by Aidan Cregan, who's got right behind him Tom Bishop, then Ivan Moak and then John Croft. No change in the order since the sort out at the first corner. Will Gollop, if anything, slightly extending his lead over this man in the Prestige of Computers car at Steve Palmer. There it was, Mick Moyd, just punching through your picture. A lot of dust now all over the circuit. It's been a terrific day here at Lyndon Hill, very hot, and of course, the chalk that's been put down there on the runoff area at the side of the uh, corner at Devil's Elbow. The dust thrown up by that doesn't help. That is fresh chalk, and we were debating earlier whether Tom Bishop would uh, harm at those sections. In the interest of safety, of course, not to make the track any wider. Tom, of course, is one of the drivers who is making extremely good use of those best parts of the circuit. And the checkered flag is ready. We're going to have another victory for Will Gollop by the looks of it. Steve Farmer last week and said with second place, there is Will Gollop. And I'm sure the crowd will be crowd will be absolutely delighted with that. Everybody cheers as he goes over the finish line. So victory to Will Gollop in the Metro. Second it was Steve Farmer. There is the man who finishes third, Big Boy. Then it's going to be Aidan Cregan. There he is. He went off with John Welsh in the 100 Gary Baker. But he was fortunate not to hit anything. And he's able to take up his position on the grid. So let's have a look at who's going to start now there on the grid. We've got number 52. There he is. Michael Shields, the current championship leader, just coming through to take up his position on the grid. We've got number two, Trevor Hopkins, number 12, Tom Bishop, and the order before the race was stopped was in the lead, 466, Steve Palmer in second place, it was Bishop, then 52, Michael Shield with Hopkins down in fourth place. Everybody will know how quick the other person can start, so they're all going to be very, very carefully there. right with him is Michael Shields again coming up the outside is Tom Bishop let's hope they all make it through once again number two Trevor Hopkins going around the outside everybody sliding who is Michael Shields Steve Palmer is the one who gets away then second Steve Palmer uh, it's uh, Michael Shields right behind him number two Trevor Hopkins well I still think we've got a good race on our hands so I think the drivers uh, John Welsh, and so they will be taking it just a little bit steady, especially down there at the point they're coming up to now, Paddock Turn. One lap in the lead is Steve Palmer, nicely in the lead, chased hard by Michael Shields, he's pulled away just a little bit from Trevor Hopkins and Tom Bishop still in that third spot. And there, I believe, is a 10 second penalty I has been to somebody. Uh, 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 certainly the start line officials not too pleased with somebody.
Palmer, it's Michael Shields. Michael Shields, the big man here, has been shown the 10 second penalty board, so he's really going to have to go some. With the points positions as they are, I think he'll still hold the lead, but only just. We'll have to wait and see. So at about half distance, Steve Palmer leads in second place, the man with the 10 second penalty. It's Michael Shield, he's in second place on the road in third. The Ford RX200 of Trevor Hopkins and then Tom Bishop a long way behind them in fifth spot. Gary Baker number 100 and then Vic Moyes 366 and right at the back of the field Aiden Cregan 173. Rallycross driver en route to the British Championship. The deciding round is this weekend at Lydon, and Steve Palmer from Burwash has every chance of winning the title in only his second season. When Palmer's Metro 6R4 comes to the start line at Lydon, it will crown a dramatic end to his rallycross year, one which he's been lucky to survive. Right at the start of the campaign, his engine blew up. This is third, and it looks like Stephen Palmer. Stephen Palmer has lost his engine. Stephen Palmer blowing a lot of smoke, and that could be terminal for Palmer. Not a bit of it. Palmer could do much better than that when he tried. A grand pack, he started in second place, but not for long. <laughs> I've had one or two nasty spills, but that one, in actual fact, um, I was lucky to walk away unhurt. I was committed to turning into the corner, and as I turned in, over she went, and it was 11 rolls. Were you counting at the time? No, I wasn't. I was just, you know, just waiting for it to stop. Palmer's lying third in the table, but he has won the last three rounds, and he does have the car to do the job to win the British title. They're quicker than a Formula One up to 100 miles an hour. We sometimes reach nine and a half hours an RPM in top gear, which is fifth gear. Um, but the 0 to 60 is around about 2.2 seconds. While Steve is already in the top flight, Newman makes his debut, though his sporting credentials are impeccable already. Well, into the ring, I was never uh, afraid. I was always just uh, anxious of losing and, and uh, concerned about losing and, and very keen to win. This is different. <laughs> You've got to definitely got the fright when you get into something like this. Whether you are the raw recruit or a British champ in the making, in Rallycross the thrills and spills are guaranteed. Meanwhile, a 